the, the most extraordinary story that can be told about the Jewish people is the fact that we're still here. We have never been treated kindly by the world around us, although we have always maintained a level of respect for the world around us. We have contributed to the world around us. The Jews were, were always persecuted everywhere, and it was, it was difficult for them. They were always considered as either second-class citizens or people who were not wanted. When you are grown in an environment when everybody pushes you to be somebody, it's something which forms your as a personality very differently than uh, the regular people I can see. We have spent the millennia attempting to survive. And we have existed largely because of our ability uh, to respond to the attacks upon us and our continuing ability to adapt to the world around us. Ort began being active in Russia a little bit after 1880, maybe 1882. The Jews were then restricted to what is now called the Pale of Settlement. Basically, they could only live in certain villages and they could only do certain things. That were, they were not allowed to own land and they were very restricted in what they could do. And so therefore, they really lived in very, very dire conditions. In the Pale of Settlements, uh, Jews, was, uh, Jews were not allowed to, uh, to get education or any pr uh, higher education or uh, even vocational education. In uh, this gap, art was created to provide the, the skills and the knowledge for those Jews who cannot be trained properly and uh, get a good education because of the restriction. It was a response to the Industrial Revolution by three Jewish philanthropists who collected funding from the Jewish community, even if it was only one rupel. The founder of Ort is actually Aris de Gunsberg. He wanted to see if he could find ways to, ed to, to find, get some education f for the Jews so that they could actually sustain themselves and get, and get jobs. Now, Gunsberg was the head of the Jewish community. He was also the person who had the relationship with the authorities. So together with Nikolai Baxt and Samuel Polyakov, three of them associated and created what was called the, the, the Society for Agricultural and Artisanal Trade amongst the Jews of Russia, which is ORT. The training uh, was a key for the survival of the Russian Jews. The idea of Ort was so strong that a lot of communities in Eastern Europe and part of Europe started to ask for the Ort uh, expertise uh, to come to their communities. Ort was in, was in Russia since 1920, started to expand outside Russia. It expanded to uh, Poland, uh, what became after that the Baltic states, because all of these areas had a lot of Jews, and there was, there was a need for, for that education. Now, the epicenter of, of Ort moved also away from St. Petersburg in, in uh, 1921. It moved to, to Paris and Berlin, and then there was a congress in the summer of 1921 in Berlin where Ort Union was established. Through the 1930s, when Ort was active in uh, Western Europe, it was active in France, it was active in Germany, it was active in all that area. But also, it's notable that Ort actually operated in Russia, in Stalin's Russia, up till 1938. So it, 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 it continued being active all the way through that period. The Jews of Europe learn new skills, keeping pace with the modern world. They learn machinery, machinists, lathe operators, Drilling machines, milling machines, grinders and shapers. It is so difficult to imagine the incredible change that European Jewry underwent in the 30s. Things happened rapidly. Expelled as we were from Russia, almost awkwardly we ended up with our offices in Berlin providing services for those Jews, requiring those services in Germany, up until the time we were thrown out of Germany. During the World War II, Ort uh, used to have uh, many programs, mainly in uh, Hungary, Romania, and the uh, famous one was in uh, uh, the ghetto in uh, Warsaw. Uh, the main idea of those schools, it was basically to give support 
to the people in the ghettos and to give them some hope that uh, uh, some training will will help them. The ghetto, uh, the school in the Warsaw ghetto was operate until the last night of the uprising in, uh, in the Warsaw ghetto. The teachers actually stayed with the children and eventually died with the children. But what was important is that they kept on going. So wherever the Jews were or it was, and, they, and it was active. We became incredibly important right after the war with uh, work in our displaced persons camps. Those who survived were called DPs, liberated but not freed. Home for these homeless was the DP camp. Where did they belong? What were they to do? Ort set up schools in the DP camps, and actually Ort was active until 1950, the early 1950s in those DP camps, because the DP camps survived until the early 1950s. Those Jews that, that were able to escape from, uh, that had survived, a lot of them tried to, to, to get away from where they were because there was just no place to go back. Returning home was something that was not terribly appealing. Indeed, it was frightening for many. So once again, we became a diaspora, we became dispersed. So Ort, therefore, was in a position where it, in order to serve the population with its education for life, it had to set up shop in those particular countries. When we are speaking about a critical point in the development of the Jewish history, Obviously, the most important one is the uh, establishment of the State of Israel. If you look at the map of Israel and recognize where the resources have been placed, you're struck by the fact that the area between Tel Aviv and Jerusalem has received incredible enrichment just by virtue of its geography. Left neglected is the periphery of Israel. And it's in the periphery that Ort has provided its greatest assets in an attempt to bring the periphery of Israel from Demona, Kiryat Yam, uh, Ashkelon, up to where the central portion of Israel is. We've been successful. The program in Dimona is just one city among 13 cities that Ort is operated now today in Israel to give the chance to those students who cannot afford it to learn science and technology education after school and to bring them to uh, the cutting edge technology in robotics. As a child, I think I was a, a quiet child. I remember my childhood just hanging out with my twin sister. I had a small group of friends. I was not very confident. I didn't know where I belonged. My parents always told me, you should be a lawyer. It was considered a, a good profession in our community. But I don't think that I wanted to be something, just something that my parents always wanted me to be. I really think that they wanted me to be something more, just for me to have a good education. <laughs> My teacher, she uh, told me, Tair, you have to, uh, you have to go to this robotics course. It will be amazing for you, and I'm so grateful for that, just because it really changed my life. Wherever we're needed, we go. Uh, Characterized, for example, our work in Latin America. There was a huge outgrowth from the war of emigration and we obviously followed. Namely, there was actually a quite large Jewish population that went to Argentina, and the first art school opened in, in, in Buenos Aires in 1941. The programs in Argentina are outstanding. They are very special places. You can see when you go in there and you see the children that it's their home, not just their school. I grew up in a very kind of like Jewish environment in Argentina. And I remember every Friday, my father used to play Israeli radio. And even now, I hear those tunes in the back of my mind from when I was a child. My father says that Ort was 
the perfect school, he always said for me. It's a unique hybrid between the real world and education. It was not Jewish in the sense of religious, it was Jewish in the sense of community and culture. One of the things the school requires is that the students become a part of their community, and so they volunteer, they give concerts, they reach out to the non-Jewish community, they become part of their home. Not just as Jews, but as Argentinians. And I think it speaks well for what they learn at school. They don't learn just a subject. They learn how to be human beings. The first thing about my Jewish identity, I can say that I didn't know that I'm a Jew before the age of seven. My parents received uh, all the negative benefits uh, of being a Jew in the Soviet Union. The anti-Semitism was an atmosphere. It was not the future they wanted for their kids. It was a a regular Moscow boy, uh, born in a very classical Soviet family. Going to the Soviet uh, kindergarten, then to the Soviet uh, school, we had uh, an excursion guided tour in Moscow. It's called Three Religions of Moscow. When we came to synagogue, my classmates in a regular school from my neighborhood found my picture on the wall. Okay. They said, wow, we have a Jew in our classroom. Let's decide what to do with him. Long story short, uh, in the end of academic year, my parents decided to move me to another school. Ort returned to Russia in uh, the end of 89, beginning of the 90s. So uh, for us, it was a great exciting to bring our knowledge, our experience uh, to the uh, falling of the former Soviet Union countries. There was not much left in terms of Jewish traditions. The young generation didn't know, the parents' generation didn't know, and the grandparents' generation, if they knew, it had either been forgotten or maybe they were not there anymore or whatever. My parents, they were afraid to send kids to the Jewish school because they were thinking that any Jewish school is like a header or, or yeshiva, so when you come here, you have to wear kippah, you have to uh, pray, you have to do all the religious stuff. And for them, being the secular Soviet Jews, it was absolutely unacceptable. When, when we are speaking about the Russian Jewry uh, today, uh, and 20 years ago or 30 years ago, when the Soviet uh, regime collapsed, we need to, to remember that we are dealing with uh, Jewish population that were disconnected from their uh, heritage. It, it is important for the Jews, especially the young Jews, to know what it means and who we are. Because if we don't know it, we're going to be reminded that at a certain point of time. And it's better that we know it and we're able to discuss it with our families. We went back into the former Soviet Union full force and full commitment to bring a resurgence in Jewish life, or the education that we provided was the lever for reaching out to the Jewish community. Because those are public schools where we're providing education that's both Judaic and STEM in its uh, nature, there is the opportunity for those who are not Jewish to apply to those schools. And indeed, the excellence of those schools is probably best noted as a result of there's this rush of non-Jews to attempt to get into these institutions. And again, I think that that's an example that uh, stands well for us. Uh, educating non-Jews in a Jewish environment only increases our acceptability with, in uh, countries in which we have not always been welcome. From Russia to Latin America, and of course to Israel as well. And it wasn't until a, a meeting in uh, Israel about a year ago that I became aware of the incredible accomplishments of the students in Demona. I was always the first one to raise hands in, in, uh, in the class, always wanting to learn. So uh, this course really gave me an opportunity, opportunity to challenge myself. I didn't knew nothing <laughs> about robots or something like that, but just having someone so uh, excited about 
learning and about teaching just made us, I think, very excited to learn. My teacher was the first one that told me, you are going to be a mechanical engineer. He and my mentor, Etty, they always believed in me. And in my, even when I didn't thought that <laughs> I could do this, I owe them everything. The effect of art on Dimona was huge. By providing arts education, we are making the periphery as strong as the center of Israel, enabling those youngsters to compete successfully with the youngsters where there are greater enrichment has been provided by the government. When I started in seventh grade, we were just a few themes, I think three themes in Dimona, and now we are over a hundred themes in Dimona. So Dimona is the city with the biggest number in Israel of robotics teams. Because of robotics, my mom uh, just is so uh, proud of what I was doing. I got a scholarship for, um, for uh, learning in the Technion, Technion for four semesters. It's uh, a very prestigious uh, university in Israel. It's the best for uh, engineering. Robotics made my personality shine. It's amazing. It's like a dream come true. When, when kids go through school and they learn, of course, general education, they learn skills, they also learn something about who they are, Jewish education. It gives you a sense of confidence as you understand who you are and what you can be, what you can be successful at. And then you're, you're given skills that you can go out into the wild world with. You felt not just a number, but you felt a person with a name and a surname. And I think that's so important when you are developing yourself as a human being, because we are talking about between 13 and 18 years old. This is a key moment in any human's, human, human person's life. Uh, we were learning a, 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 anything from normal subjects, Jewish subjects, Jewish history, Hebrew in the first few years, um, English, technical elements, artistic elements, but it doesn't matter where you come from, came from, everybody was allowed to, to be part of art. My dream was to become the engineer in computer science. And the art in that period, I think, one of the very few opportunities in Moscow where you can have the computer science lessons inside of the school. To bring uh, the new technology, the computers, the screens, the robotics, it was almost a revolution. And the, the first sign for this is when the local authority and the Ministry of Education of Russia sees ORT as a, as a leader in science and technology. ORT is the only network of schools which is a non-religious network of schools, but it does teach Jewish traditions, does respect the holidays, that has kosher food in the schools so that kids from all uh, uh, backgrounds Actually, there are also some non-Jews that go to the schools, but from all backgrounds, including religious and non-religious backgrounds, can go together. And I think this is one of the great strengths of art. You receive a very unique type of Jewish identity, Jewish identity on a cultural level, with the history, with the lessons of Hebrew. So we bring back Jews to the community, but we do it in a very polite way. There's a further impact when Jewish organizations impact societies other than the Jewish society within the greater society. When I was in Johannesburg and Cape Town recently, I viewed some of the work that Orth South Africa has done. The program in South Africa is very different because it primarily does not serve the Jewish community, but it's a very important part of the Jewish community because what we do for others is as important as what we do for ourselves. And the program in South Africa speaks to that. We have had programs in which we have reached out into the community, specifically vocational services, in an attempt to making certain that jobs are matched with individuals. Uh, that has been given to the general public as well as to the Jewish individuals within that community as well. In December, on the 18th of uh, December 1981, I gave birth to my son. The boy who gave me the child was a teacher, and I told myself that I am also going to show him that there's nothing that can stop me to go back to school, and I will make it. Mm -hmm.
support uh, started being active in South Africa uh, after the end of the apartheid regime. Uh, art became active there. So they set up a couple of programs, and uh, I, I was there actually once to, to visit. It's quite impressive, the, the work that they've been able to do in the townships, working with not only with the Jewish population, but also a lot working with the non-Jewish population. This is a whole movement in art, which is called Tikkun Olam. The principle of Tikkun Olam is trying to make the world a better place, and how the Jews can participate in, in doing that. Once one grasps on to Tikkun Olam, to repairing the world, if you believe that's why you're here, everything else falls into place. Whether you're a physician doing surgery, a teacher educating a youngster, uh, somebody who's keeping the place clean so the people who are doing those things can achieve what they have to do, you're helping to repair the world. Or it tries to add on a social character to that, which is to be able to help when it needs to help materially or, or otherwise. Are you gonna teach a kid that doesn't have a pair of shoes and, and hasn't had a breakfast and won't have a lunch, you don't do that. So ORT is, is not just education, it's education and what goes around education. About a year ago, I spent some time in Morocco. Uh, and indeed, it turns out that the king's advisor, in a conversation I had with him at a, at a dinner, uh, was a, uh, a graduate of the school in Casablanca. We were basically a family of five children. Uh, my mother didn't work, she was a housewife. And uh, uh, my father was an accountant and he died in 1969. Fortunately, Ort was there to take us to school. My family immigrated to France, to Paris, France in 1967. France was, and still is, one of the important countries in the history of art. Uh, art was established in France in the early 1920s, but really became active in the 1930s when a lot of refugees came from Germany and then later on from Central Europe. During the war, uh, art relocated from Paris down to Marseille, and after the war, it really played a role in the reconstruction, re-education of people who, who were deported and came back. Uh, and then there was a massive influx of immigrants from Northern Africa, uh, mainly uh, Morocco, but also Tunisia and Algeria, and, and played a very important role in integrating these people in, in society. Uh, today, the, France is one of the important countries with uh, a, a good number of schools uh, that show the way, have fantastic programs, both uh, at the secondary school level, but also uh, preparing for university. And it's got a very unique model of how it's financed. In France, I studied in uh, Montreuil, which is near Paris. And also, I went to Ort Montreuil and then Ort Strasbourg. Uh, what I was learning at Ort is uh, to become an electronic technician. And I, I received my deg degree in electronic, as an electronic technician. Participated in competition to go into the Anier program in Switzerland and, uh, and I was very lucky to have been accepted and uh, I was ready to, to fight life. When I was 15, my parents got divorced and they separated and suddenly you, you face yourself as a 15 year old looking at yourself from outside. That pivotal moment, that pivot moment in my life really marked me in every sense of the world. And I think that the fact that I was in a safe environment during the school time really helped me to continue and to, to, to enjoy life in the same moment. And it could have gone really wrong, you know. You're a teenager and suddenly your mom left and what do you do? I had friends and I had teachers that were supporting me and they didn't make it a thing. They let me flow with it and help me in the moments that I needed a little more of push. Usually when something bad happens, then you can take something good and it's definitely what happened with me. And, and this is a moment where I discovered dance and Israeli dance specifically. I think art was very, very successful in supporting me in every endeavor that I had and every challenge I had also as a person throughout that time. Ord is doing much more 
than just educating an individual, but is actually keeping the world Jewish by virtue of caring for families actually almost from cradle to grave, uh, at least to some extent. So one of the roles of the art schools was to try and bring back traditions and bring back Shabbos and, and, and the festivals and the holidays. And the kids would learn it in school and then it would come back into the families. To understand what's happened in your life or what parts, very small parts of this big Jewish puzzle still exist in your family, you need to understand the Jewish tradition, the Jewish culture, or it doesn't have any personal right way of being a Jew. It's just the organization and the school which helps to be the part of the Jewish community in a very, very general way. So when you come here, you are not pushed to do something specific. And from that point of view, uh, the education in art school was extremely important for building of my Jewish identity to link me with the Jewish culture, which is now is a big part of my life, the big part of my soul and the big part of my personality, I can say. I feel I had great exposure to many different things of my life that I even remember or use today. There were many different things happening in art. A, trips to study more about a specific area, uh, going to Israel, going to different places in Argentina, um, going to learn about the Holocaust and actually traveling with, us, with the school as a delegation, as a community to learn about that. Um, however, one of the most interesting projects for me from my course, let's call it, was Ort Art. We have the Festival of Arts, everybody's allowed to show or to work or to help or to do whatever you want to do. It's not part of your actual curriculum. And students were in, in charge of making it happen. Everybody took a different role. And uh, I decided to dance and it became al almost like a healthy, uh, a safe way of escape reality. It was really amazing. The the support and the response from everybody in art. And it was really, really amazing to feel, wow, I'm not alone doing this. I feel I have a community with me, not behind me, but with me, we are together in this. And I was teaching in almost every Jewish community in Buenos Aires. On Saturdays, I would come and attend art. They started teaching me how to start to open a computer, to type, to email, to do this and this and this, and now started to know how to use a computer through art. I don't have a problem now, I'm doing this on my own. It's always been there to give people what is usually called vocational training. It gives them skills, uh, techni technical skills, engineering skills, something that they can go and, and market themselves on the job market for. If you're looking for jobs and you find jobs, you can you can then, you know, go on with life. I think this gives people confidence. I think this helps them express themselves and, 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 and be, you know, people who can then be good citizens in, in their own communities. Through art, I touch 150 schools. I was a facilitator of those schools. They've empowered me. They were supporting me. Always I was there with them. Very few of us reach our potential. Reaching potential is what ORT permits. In an ORT program, every child can become whatever they are capable of becoming, because every child is given the opportunity to develop him or herself for whatever they can be. But they also learn how to be part of their own communities, like any part of ORT. They learn how to be citizens. Anything that we can do as individuals within the society in which we work that permits others to reach their potential is a worthy cause. A number of months ago, I had foot surgery, and I walked around in a cast for a while. And I don't know if you've ever walked in a cast, but when you try to walk in a cast, you lurch. You, have no, you can't help it. And I looked online, and there is a thing now called an even up. It's a little piece of rubber some material, and you put it on the uncasted foot. You attach it to your shoe of the uncasted foot, and then your stride is even. It evens up, 
from the cast to the other foot. And that's what Ort is doing. For me, Ort is um, a GPS for success. Once you choose your direction, Ort can bring you there. There really isn't one word. It's so hard to get a single word in the English language that, that uh, can describe what Ort does, what Ort's impact is. Maybe impact might be the word. I definitely wouldn't be here and Dimona would, wouldn't be so such an amazing robotics empire without uh, Ort's support. My connection with Ort and the way that Ort influenced me and the way I think and the way I present myself is always the, the Ort way. I have three kids. They are young. My daughter is four, my son is two, and my youngest daughter is eight months only. I want them to remember that they are the part of the Jewish peoplehood. We are people. We are uh, accumulation of anecdotes and stories and experiences in life that make you who you are today. And without forgetting where you come from, you you need to know where you want to go. And I think Ort is very much part of who I am today. I, it's like I can't imagine myself not being Jewish. Like I can't imagine myself going to another high school. All of us, all of us have dreams. Seldom are all those dreams achieved. But we have given these youngsters the opportunity to dream. Just having that an organization that believed in our potential just opened all the doors for us. Anybody who had contributed to that dream can leave this planet with the concept that they had indeed performed an act of great kindness. I am the representative of a new generation of a Jewish people. For us, the Jewish identity is not formed because of anti-Semitic experience. Our Jewish identity formed because of our positive impression from a Jewish community. Ort, it's a mother to us. It's a mentor, it's a teacher, it's a shoulder to lean on. They are doing all these things to support Alexander so that they can move youth of Alexander from where they are and change their minds to another level. When I started my career as an IT technician more than 20 years ago, I was dreaming about the career in IT. Now, I'm an active citizen of Russia. I'm a member of the Jewish community. I'm a very creative, innovative, and active member of a local society. Uh, and I'm a director of Ford in Russia. I have no idea what tomorrow's technology will be, but I believe what will be there doing the same thing mission-wise that it does today in providing the Jewish community with a link to the broader Jewish community. Using the tools I have an ORT, I can change the community, I can change the world, and I can give a lot of things to kids from a Jewish families now. Uh, one of the outgrowths of uh, our ed educational programs uh, is obviously the production of individuals who become productive and contribute to society. In the U.S., I started working as an electronic engineer, and I was very passionate about my work. That's one of the blessings I had in life, is I was very passionate about my work. And 
Uh, I worked for very many different companies for 10 years. And then after 10 years, I started my own company. Uh, my company uh, manufactured, uh, designed, manufactured and sold worldwide network communication test equipment. I was uh, inspired to give back to Ord because I received this uh, wonderful gift, this opportunity from Ord. I have been uh, a donor with Ord for over 25 years and I wanted to give back and I want to be that person who receive it to give it back. The Anier Elite Academy program that has uh, started in Israel in uh, 2013 is the continuation of the Anier program where I went myself. And from 1997 to 2013, there was a gap where there was no Anier program and I was uh, very happy to uh, help re-establish that program. The most valuable lesson I've learned with ORT is uh, to become a good person uh, and to help build whatever I'm associated with. Thanks to ORT, I had the opportunity to study engineering uh, in a school in Switzerland and uh, without it, I don't know what I would have done. That school produces uh, a number of graduates from high school going on to Technion and being an important part of the startup nation. It's something that we need to work together to, to find the best way to support as many kids as possible. It's like, why wouldn't we give the best present to our child, which is education? During the making of this film, the world was hit by the COVID-19 pandemic. Facing one of the greatest challenges in its history, Ort worked day and night to respond globally, supporting our educators to continue teaching and our students to continue learning, just as we have done for 140 years. With thanks to our educators, donors, supporters, and volunteers, we're able to continue having a positive impact on the lives of 300,000 people in more than 30 countries every year. <laughs>